the president of this event, the president of this institute, Sri Sunil Vakenka, secretary of this institute, Sri Gadi Jayashi Kankar, Comrade Bhimarav Sarode, former minister, President of Mission J. Bhim, my beloved brother Sri Rajinder Paul Kaudamchi, and the other rest of respected leaders in the Dayas and uh, our brothers and sisters. You all are sitting and listening hours together here without lunch, even a cup of water. So I don't want to take much of time. I congratulate my beloved brother Sunil Vokekar for his great ambition to install our great warrior of social justice from the Imperia. <laughs> Due to some technical reasons and legal issues, it is postponed to for a week. Postponed for a week. Anyhow, we are celebrating from the Imperia and Imperia Nanai Singh here. But this is the first statue in Maharashtra. There are many statues, hundreds of statues of Imperia in Tamil Nadu, even in Delhi also. But out of Tamil Nadu, this is the first statue of Kariya, installed by our brother Anil Kavya. I asked him, why you are installing Kariya statue here, instead of other leaders hailing from Maharashtra, including Brother Bihar Vedka. He replied, he is the only leader against Madhusmati in India. We have to appreciate him. We have to introduce him to national level. Already our people knows about Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Madhat Mahapule, but Sariya must be go to the grassroots level in our nation. This is his answer to me. Mr. Sunil replied, Really, I am proud of Sunil Vakeka. I appreciate and congratulate him for his, this, for his achievement, for this event. I would like to express my sincere thanks to Sunil and Mr. Mukul for inviting me for this historic event. I have many programs in Tamil Nadu. Actually, I hesitated to attend this program, but Mr. Sunil and Mukul, both of them are insisting me to attend this event. I respect their feelings. I asked us again once another question. Why you have chosen me <laughs> to attend this program? <laughs> there are many more leaders of the career movement in Tamil Nadu. There are many more leaders. He replied that 
you are the leader from South India, bringing the ideologies of Korea to the national level. I came to know about your contribution, about Korea and Ambedkar. Then only we have chosen you to come here to unveil the state of Pandit Korea. Once again, my dear brother, I express my gratitude for this invitation to me. Korea is here. Tamil term, you know. It means great man, that's all. Kriya means great soul, great man, great people. In Hindi or in Sanskrit, Mahatma. The same word. Mahatma is in Tamil, Kriya, that's all. Mahatma is in Hindi or Sanskrit, I don't know whether it is Hindi or Sanskrit. Maha means Piriya, Piriya, great. Atma means man or soul. So Mahatma translates into Tamil as Piriya. So Piriya is nickname of E.V. Ramaswami. E.V. Ramaswami is his original name. Our writer Bimrao Sarve mentioned in his speech who gave this nickname Kriya in a women's conference. Sri Madhi Minamba Swaraj gave this nickname to D.V. Ramaswami as Kriya. So now the name Kriya well known to the world. Everyone knows about Kriya. What is his contribution? That is very important. Before that, I would share my views about Kriya and Ambedkar. Sunil told me that police rejected permission because of some complaint that Periya is anti ambedkarite like that. Periya burned the constitution, so he is against the Ambedkar. Why are you unveiling this statue in Maharashtra? Like that, complaints. It is not true. I can say that the only leader from South India who supported Dr. B. R. Ambedkar in his lifetime. Only leader from South India, from the Korea, supported like anything, Baba Sahib Dr. Ambedkar. He never criticized Baba Sahib Ambedkar in his life. He never. He published in his daily newspaper the speeches of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar in the early days, 1930s, 1940s. Then the Periyar went to Myanmar, that is Burma, and met Baba Sahib Dr. Ambedkar. Both of them discussed about our nation and our the emancipation of the people who are suffering not in the name of caste and religion. So Ambedkar and Kariya are very thickest friends. There are many differences between them. But there are many more similarities between them. Baba Sahib Dr. Ambedkar focused mainly on annihilation of caste through parliamentary democracy through constitutional means. He wants to eradicate or articulate the caste system through constitutional means. This is Ambedkar view. But 
தந்தை பெரியா பாபா சாஹிப் பெரியா பாபா சாஹிப் தந்தை பாபா சாஹிப் பெரியா wanted to annihilate the caste but not through the constitutional means not through the democratic parliamentary democracy through the revolutionary approach this is the difference between periyar and ambedkar he didn't have faith in the parliamentary system that's why he burnt the constitution even it is drafted by dr b r ambedkar he never have faith in constitutional system here priya he is fully radical and revolutionary leader he has no faith in this parliamentary democracy so that he did not involve in the electoral politics he did not try to get any post in the name of caste or community in the political era to the media there were many opportunities to become chief minister of tamil nadu or to become any ministership in the center he had many opportunities but he rejected everything but ambedkar had faith in this parliamentary democracy he wrote this constitution he was in the ministry also so he had faith in this constitution because he married so this is the difference between periyar and ambedkar regarding religion and the periyar rejected all kinds of religion not only hindu not only hinduism he rejected all religion but baba sahab ka bhi kya embraced buddhism so this is the difference between periyar and ambedkar but he is interpreting buddhism is differently not like other leaders buddhism is not a religion it is a way of life <laughs> it is talking about liberty equality and fraternity it is not talking about god and worshiping buddhism is not for god it is not talking about god or goddesses or worshiping or temple or any rituals this is the perception of baba sahib ambedkar regarding buddhism that is entirely different that's what he named navaya what he is following buddhism there are many factions in buddhism hinayana mahayana zen buddhism like that he didn't follow this kind of religion this kind of buddhism he made a new path that is navayana new path new path it means new navayana navayana buddhism so ambedkar has faith in religion like buddhism but periyar has no faith even in buddhism this, this is the main difference there is no any other differences between them and the brahmanism both of them the same way same stand anti brahmin dominance they never propaganda against brahmins as had politics this is not had politics hindutva is a had politics against minorities in other nation bjp and rss are doing had politics against minorities aversion against muslims and christians and other religious minorities this is nothing but hindutva propagated by rss leaders but periyar ambedkar 
fought against anti-Brahmin dominance in our society. Anti-Brahmin, anti-Brahminic dominance is very important. You underline this word. They are not anti-Brahmins. Anti-Brahminic dominance. Why they did like this? Because in everywhere, Brahminic dominance is oppressing and suppressing the working class people. No education. The people who are belonging to OBC, not only a CST, it is very important. You have to think over it. No education, not only for middle class, middle tribes. No employment. If you have no education, you cannot get employment. Except hard of you. Agrarian works or any other like that. So we need education. Who are they? Sodras. Or other background <coughs> Before Ambedkar and before Periyar, there were many leaders like Mahatma Phule, Pandit Ayoti Das in Tamil Nadu, Retamani Srinivasan, M.C. Raja. Before a picture and Piriya, the contemporary days, <coughs> Amsi Raja and Siva Raja are contemporary days to Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Ayodhya Das Pandit, Pandit Ayodhya Das, who found Tamil Buddhism, who coined the term Dravidian, Dravida, Dravidian ideology in the country before Ambedkar, before Piriya. So we should know this history also. anti brahminical dominance, that is the main motto of Periyara and Vedika. Even now, the OBC leaders not ready to understand and not ready to realize this concept. This is the issue. OBC leaders or OBC associations, OBC movements must know about this concept Brahmin versus non Brahmin. The conflicts, the contradictions between Brahmins and non Brahmins. These are the stories of Brahmas or histories. Brahmins versus non Brahmins. Among non Brahmins, there are thousands of communities, thousands of castes. The outcast people who are called as Dalits and Tribes, not coming under this OBC fold. So there is a gap. Between OBC and Dalits, between OBC and tribes. That's what Sri Kanshramji made a concept Bhagujan unity. The Bhagujan unity means excluding Brahmins, the exclusion of Brahmins. This is the stream. Our ancestors, even Bhagavan Buddha also fought against this social order. Brahmin versus non Brahmins. Bhagavan Buddha also anti Brahminical dominant leader, revolutionary leader. Buddha also a revolutionary leader who brought 
anti brahmanical dominance ideology in this nation. That's what he coined the terms liberty, equality, and fraternity. What are these three terms? Liberty, equality, and fraternity, it is totally against the Varnasrava Dharma and Manu Dharma. Manuskriti is against to these three ideologies, three doctrines, three philosophies. So we can understand, we can realize that Bhagavan Buddha, also a revolutionary leader, who fought against inequality among the society. So OBC people should realize about this concept of Periyar and Ambedkar. What the OBC people think that Ambedkar for that is Periyar for OBC, Pure from OBC. So no consolidation among OBC and Sri Lanka and Sri tribes and minorities. How can we achieve this Bahujan unity? Bahujan unity means consolidation of all scheduled class, scheduled tribes, other backward class and minorities. But another meaning is Bahujan unity means exclusion of Brahminical dominance. <laughs> exclusion of Brahmins. That's what they did wisely that Ram temple, Ram issues. Before Mandal, after Mandal. This is the history of current India. Before Mandal, after Mandal. Karka Kalenkar Commission, you know about this history. Baba Sahib Ambedkar resigned his ministership due to some reasons. He explained in the press meet because of these reasons, I resigned my ministership. In these reasons, he mentioned about I requested Prime Minister of India, Sri Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, to constitute a commission for backward welfare, backward classes. But they didn't. So that I resigned this post. Because of his pressure, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru constituted a commission to find out the current status of OBC in the country. That is nothing but Kaka Kalevka Commission. The commission handed over, submitted its report to the government, union government, but they didn't bother about that report. After some years, across the country, regionally many OBC movements rosen up. Lalu Prasad Yadav, Ryan Singh Yadav, Nitish Kumar, many leaders from North India, South India, from OBC community, they have raised about OBC rights, then they constitute another commission in the name of BP Mandal Yadav, Mandal Commission. What happened? In the regime of Congress, they didn't bother about that report also. But our revolutionary leader, warrior of social justice, when we seek, came to the power. It is a golden opportunity for OBC people. With the support of Ramdas Paswan and the other Dalit leaders, he declared, I am going to implement the Mandal report. He declared. What happened at the time of implementing Mandal report? It is very important you have to discuss. After implementing, after declaration of VP Singh about the implementation of Mandal report, B. 
BJP headed by Adwani. Adwani. We brought their support. BMP Singh lost his regime. But he didn't bother about it. He knows very well that they will withdraw. They will be withdrawn. Their support to the government. He knows very well. But he wanted to implement the Mandal report. That is very important. After declaration of this by VP Singh, Adwani started a Radhayatra, you know. Against OBC welfare, against Mandal report, against the social justice for OBC people. OBC leaders and OBC associations, movements should think of it. Who are the enemies for OBC? No leaders from Dalits and tribes against Mandal report or against OBC social justice. No leaders across the country. Always Dalit leaders and tribal leaders are extending their support to the OBC people. So real enemies of OBC are Sankhpani Vas. This is very important. This concept should be known by all the leaders from OBC. That is very important. So Periyar fought against Brahminical dominance. For what? Social justice of OBC and other downtrodden. That's so what he is saying about God, no God. That is not his main motto. He is not bothering about God. Actually, he hailed from Orthodox family. In earlier days, he was leader of some temples. For some funny time. His father and mother have faith in God. He was in Congress. He is a very strict disciple of Gandhiji. But once he came to know that Congress is also a party for forward communities. Brahmin domination within the parties going on. So he came out from the Congress, started self-respect movement. Each and every individual should have their own self-respect. If you have, if you develop your self-respect, if you want to develop your self-respect, you should not go along with mythology of God and stories of Prana. That is the way of Periya. He brought this message to the lay people. You are believing God. That's what Brahmin people are cheating you. You are believing in Puranas. You are believing in mythology of gods and goddesses. That's what you are always cheated by farmer communities. They know what is God and what is Goddess? They do not bother about it. But you are always thinking about this fact. There is no such a fact. You should work hard. You must have education. You must have employment. You should develop your self-respect. This is your ideology. Each and every individual should have their own self-respect. How can we develop our self-respect? 
we must have our education. If you need education, there is no proper way to get it so that the protection of Dalits, OBC, minorities, social justice must be there. That is very important. Social justice. So he develops the ideology of social, social justice. What is periodism? You can say social justice is periodism. Social justice. What for social justice? For equality among the people. Equality is the ultimate aim. No equality in Manuspriti. No equality in Varnasrama Dharma. No equality in Hindu society. So if you want to break this social structure, there is a weapon that is nothing but social justice. Only because of social justice, you can break this social order. So that RSS and BJP are always opposing BP Mandal report. So my request. Dalits and tribes are always against caste order, caste system. That's what only one slogan, annihilation of caste from Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. No, no only citizen says about annihilation of caste. But there you are says. There you are, there you are says. Only the OBC leader. He is not hailing that I am, I am OBC. He is not hailing. He is not claiming I am OBC. But he has similarity along with Dr. T.R. Ambedkar. No other leaders talk about an English of caste. No slogan hailed from any other OBC platform. Because they are thinking that it is pride of them, the caste pride. Caste pride, pride. This is the source, the resource of Hindu ideology. If you feel you are proud of caste, if you feel your caste is your pride, you are indirectly supporting Hindu agenda. If you want to protect the caste system, you are indirectly support primary companies. So that doctor, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar said only the solution to demolish this social structure that is annihilation of caste. How we can annihilate this caste system? We can annihilate. If we consolidate ourselves to protect social justice, to protect the constitution, this is the only threat to tie up all the Bhagavan people. Bhagavan people. Whenever you talk about OBC centric politics, they will raise the Ram temple or Krishna politics or any other religious politics because they want to unite all the OBC as Hindu. They want to hide in their fold, Hindu to our fold. They don't want to expose themselves as we are Brahmins. They want to expose themselves as Hindu. They want to expose, they want to tell that Brahmins are so Hindu, OBC people are so Hindu. So under this world, they want to be safe. This is one of the kind of safeguard politics. 
our fighting against Brahminical dominance. We want to exclude Brahmins. We want to consolidate Bhagujan people, except Brahmins. But they do not allow us to consolidate as Bhagujan. This is the trick. This is the tactics of RSS and Sankhpanivas. So my request, OBC associations, OBC movements, OBC leaders must come forward to unite all the Bhagavan people across the country. I have read a pamphlet which provided, circulated by our Sharan Dior. Sravan Dhauri. He mentioned about this point. He mentioned in his speech delivered in Chennai, May 2022. Boldly he said, OBC people should come forward to unite all the Bhagavad That is very important. Because this fighting between OBC and forward communities, not between Seven Cost and other Hindu people. They want to make this gap between Dalits and non Dalits. We are trying to make a difference between Brahmins and non Brahmins. Kriya made a non Brahmin movement, but caste people making non Dalit movements. <laughs> what is this? So they want to split working class. Please think over it. Whether we are going to consolidate Prabhujan people or going to serve indirectly to the ideology of Sankari Wars. Brahmins versus non Brahmins is the politics to protect Prabhujan people. If you go along with Hindutva agenda, the split will be between Dalits and non Dalits. If you go like this, we never achieve. Even OBC people cannot achieve their goal at all. Why? Because they are not against the Dalits. Actually, Parvak communities or Sankhari was actually against the OBC. This is the real politics. This is the truth. They have to know. RSS and Sankhari was achieved e e w s you know you e w s economically weaker sections reservation for economically weaker section is it really economically weaker section is it really for economically weaker section no it is really for forward communities yes. economically weaker sections or also in the OBC also, scheduled caste also, even tribes, economically weakers are there. But this 10% of the reservation will not go for OBC, economically weaker people or scheduled caste or scheduled tribes. It is meant for only forward communities or only for Brahmins. <coughs> Social justice means not in the scale of economic. It is not economic criteria. Social justice, discrimination and victimization. It is only meant for against discrimination, against victimization. In the name of cause and religion. You have to uplift the people who are suffering in the name of caste and religion years to the generation to generation. But they want to dilute this concept, social justice. That's what they achieve in EWS. So OBC leaders must know this fact. This is my request. Our Kanshi Ramji, even Mahatma Phule Ji, and Tandai Periyar Ji, all of them are
for Belgian people. It means not for forward communities. That is very important. It is exclusion of Brahmins or Brahminical dominions. Brahminical dominions. Otherwise, we cannot understand what Periyar or what Ambedkar. Our Sunni really made a historic event today. He can unveil the statue of Periyar after some days. Anyhow, I am very happy for having this opportunity to share my views about Sunday Periyar. We, the Talit Panthers, in three, four decades, identified as Dalit Panthers in Tamil Nadu, but I made it as Liberation Panthers in Tamil Nadu. I made a separate flag, not only blue, I mixed red also along with blue. This is my party flag. We must be left-oriented. Left-oriented politics. We, we should bring. We are not indirectly, we should not indirectly supporting right-wing politics. That is very important. The real Ambedkarite or Fulaid or Periyarist should not go along with Hindu agenda. Hindutva agenda means BJP agenda. BJP agenda means RSS agenda. This is not about Hinduism. Hinduism is entirely different from Hindutva agenda. It is a political agenda. They want to make this country as Hindu Rashtra means Brahmana Rashtra. They want to make it as Hindu Rashtra, as Brahminical Rashtra. That's what Professor Saravan mentioned in his speech that we want to make this country as Bali Raja Rashtra. <laughs> he mentioned in his speech, I, 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 I have read his family. I told in Tamil Nadu, we want to make Buddhist Rashtra, Bauta Rashtra. Bauta Rashtra. It is a great dream. Bauta Rashtra will not have caste system. Bauta Rashtra will maintain the equality among the people. So our, our demand is Bauta Rashtra. Our mission J Wing leader dedicated his life entirely to bring this Buddhism across the country because he wanted to convert this country as Buddhist country. That means not a religious country. Buddhist country is not a religious country. It is a country of equality, egalitarian society. So these differences must be brought to the people, grassroots level. This is my request to you all. Thank you for this opportunity. I try my level best to communicate my views to you all. Thank you.